going to sketch from Bridgman's drawings today to see what we can learn. If you've done any kind of, you know, figure drawing uh, lessons or whatever, Bridgman is always, is one of the always, uh, the biggest names that come up. Come up. This is his uh, book where it's it's all of his books combined into one. You can always get those small books and they're all relatively cheap. So I recommend picking up a Bridgman book. Bridgman, George B. Bridgman. Yeah, George B. Bridgman. Um, look up some of his things. He has things on heads, arms, legs. Uh, it's it's a wonderful book to sketch from. Uh, he's I don't I don't, actually don't read it too much. It's I more just look at what he draws and tries to draw myself. Try to understand what the mark making he he put, puts in. Like it's it's structural, but it has a lot of movement throughout it. So it's I find it nice to to learn from. Today I'm gonna just maybe work on some back pieces mostly, uh, but I'll see as we move on through this what we want to learn. I'll just start maybe drawing from. I like this one here. We'll we'll draw from that and see what we can learn. Just a nice big C curve to find that gesture. Still gonna treat it like anything else I usually do. I'm not here to copy Bridgman down to the letter. I just want to understand what he's doing. And the only way I can really do that is by trying to draw. You know, like, like um, how do I mean by that? Like, you can look at it all you want, but you need to start just putting down marks and finding his flow. And then look at, maybe you look at your drawings later or during it, and you start to understand, like, what that mark actually does for you. Why thinking about the flow of the form in that way helps. His stuff is like very fluid all around. It's very nice, but he has great overlap of form and muscles. As much as like, you know, you do your life drawing and stuff, you just don't see all of this all the time. But doing these kind of things is great just to pick up indications of it on, on it. Or understanding why, you know, understanding that these muscles and forms are there can really help you design your own drawings or life drawing or just pick up on subtle visual cues that are there that you might not always notice. Are these also a good, a good thing to do with these sometimes is to come back to them later and see if you can kind of like, you know, just shade them in. See, see if you can accentuate some forms a little bit more. Like this trapezius is lovely the way he drew that onto the Terry's major I need the ramboids are underneath the trapezius, if I recall. Just these little subtle marks he makes to wrap around the form because a lot more volume. He's really slotted in the trapezius there into the back, to the spine of the back. To the sacral here. Sacral triangle, I'm pretty sure it's called. Anyway, we'll move on to another drawing. I'll draw this back here. Or this one. Actually, I like this one. There's a lot more movement to it. It's a C curve in the opposite direction. We'll exaggerate it a little bit. Again, when I'm drawing, I'm kind of just always keeping... Like, I'm not... I'm just keeping this stiff, either using my elbow or my wrist to do kind of sweeping motions. I don't, like, try to draw in too much, unless we're going very small. You know, they, like, these little motions are in for the later part of your drawing, really. Just feel around what you're doing for a little bit. I got a sense that he exaggerates a lot what he sees, but that only really um, helps him in his design of his drawings. Like, there's no way he sees all of this all the time. It's not perfectly clear on the form. But his understanding of anatomy and skeletal structure really helps him design a lot, you know. It's a great, nice little, um, very hard angles to the front of the thigh there. When it connects in to that um, knee, you can, you can tell this bit here is the front of the knee. Very nice. And the calf has a beautiful shape to it. That is such a nice back leg to draw from. Not something you see all the time. 
it's a really nice rhythm that he has with his hard lines and curved lines that is present through all of his drawing and again just like some lovely lovely little marks made made to uh, improve that sense of form flowing around that torso Again, everything like you can even see in this uh, the butt cheek here, like there's such a nice step down, and that form is squished and creates a cast shadow, and a wrapping behind the leg here as the leg goes forward into it, and then again here, ah, oh, wonderful, just really nice, really nice work. Uh, let's go to another page. This is the front of the torso, but we'll give it a go can be a bit difficult sometimes I find myself so why not learn from it I'll do from um, this one here what have we got, we got continue with the sweep in motion again we don't have the full torso here it's more just the uh, a more bust of what we're seeing see what I can do with it though. Again his presence of curved and straight lines is, is all through through his drawings. A little bit more complex here maybe I should have um, went on for another page for this. There's just a lot going on. We'll see what we can do though. Again just really nice again very clear step down that shoulder turning this way lovely to see got the clavicle and let's see here the shoulder blade here wrapping on to that deltoid pectoral muscles wrapping underneath the deltoid there Everything has a clear step down. Everything has a slight turn to it. Even if it's a subtle mark, it really just tells a lot. His marks, like, they're, they're there for a reason, you know? And the trapezius at the back, we need to get that into. Okay, maybe that was a bit, um, what's it called? Maybe not super clear in the way there but not too bad. Maybe we'll move on to another page from this. A bit more space. Had to get a new um pastel pencil because my last one just was broken beyond repair. Mm, should I do one of these? Yeah, it's a nice one. That's just the um pectoral muscle and the arm obviously going upward there. So it has that stretched. We'll do this little shape there. Actually, we'll try to find the gesture before maybe I do any shapes. Still has that pectoral muscle wrapping underneath as it twists kind of inside as it wraps underneath the deltoid. It's really nice to see. And he wraps that pectoral muscle kind of just layers on top of each other, big groups of it. I don't know if I think I was drawing this, I would have seen the deltoid maybe around here, correct? And what the sternal notch would be around here. So the clavicle would be going up like this and behind to around there onto the acromion process on top of the scapula. scapula? Is it scalpia? A scalp a scapula, isn't it? Something like that, anyway. Um, yeah, nice one, though, anyway. Let's, let's move on to another drawing. I, need, I think I want some bigger forms. The arm? Yeah, let's do the arm. These are some nice arms. Really nice arms. Uh, I'll draw... I like this one more than this one. They're similar, but um, this one's a bit more simplified, so I'll work with it. I've done too many marks there. Sorry. Just you can see this arm is like 
down, in, down, in. Really nice gesture to it. Maybe not a view of the arm you see all the time, but it shows a lot. Triceps. Really again, nice step down. Sort of form of it very well. Your elbow. Forget the name of that bone, actually. Which I also forget the name of the uh, muscles of the forearm. Can't think of them th to save my life. That's okay. We can still learn from it. We don't have to know the names of things all the time. Just helps you, I think. Uh, the thing I found with learning the names of muscles and bone is just... They kind of just help you remember them, I think, when you go to draw a form. You just start thinking about them a little bit more. Don't exactly help you, um, you don't know, understand how to draw it, but <laughs> just makes you think about it a bit more. Uh, I don't mind how I drew this arm. It does have that, like, you know, on top of each other sort of feel, but it's not super fluid. Let's go to another one here. Uh, do, do, do. You guys can't see the left page, so I'll stick with it on this page. More arms. Give me maybe a full figure. Why oh, do you like these arms actually? Let's do that. Just very like two value, keeping it all simplified for me. I do like seeing that. Very easy gesture to work on top of. Let's break it down. Maybe we'll break it down in sections. I'm gonna go from bottom of the deltoid to that forearm muscle there. I cannot remember. I know what the one it, it does though. It connects into the deltoid and then wraps onto your, now your ulna. This bit. That bit. And then that's your wrist here. So let's mark these guys out. We'll kind of do it the way he does it a little bit to see what we can do. That. We're still trying to keep it fluid. Not going to go perfect with it. And then just follow the shapes along here. Trying to understand what they mean. See what we can... Just try to get that knowledge into our brain, into our subconscious a little bit. So when we go to draw another time, it will just click for us a little bit. Just be like, oh, I saw that shape before. I drew that shape before. I know how Bridgman represents it. Maybe I can throw a little bit of that into the way I drew something. a really good sense of what wraps on top of each other with Bridgman's drawings. It's really nice. Really just like, again, beautiful way the, the form turns on top of each other. Maybe the hand. Let's see if we got any nice hand drawings. That's a nice one. I'll do a just one big page for this guy. Where's my sandpaper? I'll, get, I'll just sharpen this a little bit. Yeah. Alright, let's try this hand out. I'll try to do the full page for this. There's a lot going on, but I still need to keep the gesture of it. Can't get caught up in the details of everything going on. We still have that sense of things and forms wrapping on top of one another. A lot of fluid motion throughout this drawing. Now I always find like, I don't know if you guys saw my last figure drawing video with the ballpoint pen, but with the second drawing, 
I remembered to be a bit more fluid and looser with it. And I still was able to get my proportions. But the flow compared to my the first drawing was just so much better. Because I just kind of believed in what I could do, you know? If you start off, this is why I think like warm-ups are always pretty good. When you go into a live drawing class and they start you off with like one minute, two minute um, poses. The warm-up to keep yourself loose and bring a bit of confidence back into yourself is just so important. You can feel that confidence throughout the wrong. Well, like in the first the one I did, I was very tight. And um, even the figure itself looks a bit stiff. All my mark making was a bit stiff. Really likes the way he draws fingers. They're lovely. Even these little marks here, they have different um, directions to them. And it changes the way the form flows down. They're very nice. I like them. Not sure if I completely know how I could use them myself though this is like just the forms wrapping that way and then slowly pinching inside okay I get that a little bit I definitely have to practice it a bit more but I understand where he's coming from with it what he's trying to tell me you know you have to remember when you're drawing that all mark me like it drawing in general is just it's um it's a visual language you're you're here to to translate what you see, and you can do that in like any style you want. But you, the principles are there to help you, um, like describe, like get. They're there to help you, um, describe what we see properly. Help you, help you translate what you want, what you want to get across. You know. Styles styles come and go and change, but the principles never really change. You just get good at them, so you can design with them. I love this thumb, it's beautiful. He's like hard marks for the, um, for the bones. You can really feel, I think, on all of his drawing that, you know, what's bone and what's, what's muscle, it's very clear in the way he draws. even got some soft and hard edges it's kind of scattered throughout his drawings okay yeah I'm happy enough with that always always a good uh, always a joy to draw from Bridgman to be honest always very fun really loosens you up um, I really recommend getting some of his books again they're fairly they're fairly cheap um, I think like the smaller versions of these where it's just like head and it's just torso and whatnot um, quite quite inexpensive I think this book might have been maybe 20 something euro and that's every single uh, book in one book super handy um, so if you can, I mean if you can buy that go for it but if you can't maybe just get the smaller books and draw from them and again I think you can find a lot of his drawings online to sketch from really nice uh, thanks for joining me everybody